Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about A Wrinkle in Time. I think when you're reading any review of this movie, or any perception of this movie, I guess, is that you get to this kind of problem people are, I guess, having, is uh, the ideas of what this film represents versus the actual movie itself. And this film does represent a lot of things to a lot of people. It is the first film to have over a hundred million dollar budget directed by a woman of color. It has a multi-ethnically diverse cast. It is based on a book that was considered unfilmable and probably still is. I get if you were watching this review years from now and this represents something to you as a kid and it means something to you and you enjoy all the surreal odd imagery and it speaks to you in a certain way and it represents something to your childhood. You're looking at a guy who grew up watching Willow way too many times. This film can represent a lot and that this happened, that, that a woman of color made a film that was over $100 million and there should be more female directors of color directing major motion pictures. I'm not against that at all, but I don't think this movie is very good. And I think us giving softball reviews because Ava DuVernay directed this is not exactly the sort of thing we should be doing either. We should base this on this film is and not what necessarily this film represents. Now I understand falling in love with a weirder different kind of film that uh, has interesting imagery and doesn't completely fit in the same mold, particularly in a mainstream sense. I think that's sort of like what makes cult movies is you have people who aren't necessarily cinephiles and they see something that is different from their normal kind of average kind of blockbuster mold and it sort of blows their mind in a certain way. And A Wrinkle in Time I totally accept will probably be that for certain people. There's certain points to this movie that are outstanding, particularly its young cast. There's certain parts that are weird and surreal. But there's other parts where this film just doesn't feel like early on there's these two teachers talking and I was like, this is just straight up bad acting. Like this is like, like just bad. Like this is like, like it's not even like good acting or good dialogue. It's just like all around a horrible sequence. Like why is that in this movie? And there's certain uh, things where it feels like honestly right when it starts, I'm like, wait, is this where they're in like the weird planet or whatever? The flow of it just felt so kind of unnatural. It felt like sort of alien. It didn't flow in a way where I could get as involved in the characters. And it almost felt like the thing that films that are based on books do is where they get you to plot points because they're supposed to because the book did it not because the narrative earns it and there's a lot of that going on with this film and I don't really think it got past it I get that this is not made for me or so, and all that stuff but that's not my issue with it my issue with it is that it just did not feel as tight of a film it felt like a weird surreal like lovely bones or cloud atlas type of thing Neither of those films, I think, work. Uh, well, Cloud Atlas is at least interesting enough. Let's well, maybe the more of the Lovely Bones thing, where it's just like there's interesting parts about it, but it just feels messy and like they let a director go off and do their kind of own weird thing and didn't really rein them in at all. Like most of the time, they would do on a big studio thing and let them kind of create and do all this imagination. And that might sound like a beautiful utopian fantasy to let a director work in, but then they come back with something that's not necessarily so weird and different it's like a, a strange cult movie it's more just like like this weird kind of off big blockbuster that most of us are kind of like not sure exactly what to do with and we'll probably forget about and I think A Wrinkle in Time it feels like Ava DuVernay made a big blockbuster between this and Selma obviously she made the 13th and she's been involved in other things it, it feels like she made her defining big blockbuster huge movie and this is like her sophomore follow-up. I mean, it's not her second film. She's made a bunch of films, but it feels like a director who's kind of earned the trust of the public. And I guess with Ava DuVernay and her public persona, in some ways, I guess some people may feel certainly she has because of Selma and her previous films and the 13th and so forth which is kind of interesting because a film like this the way it flows feels like someone who had a huge you know blockbuster four quadrant hit before um, which I don't really think someone was I do find it interesting that no one really wants to pan it but I will have to say I midway through this film I was honestly like this imagery is cool 
but this isn't really working for me on a narrative level at all. Like, it felt like she didn't do the thing that Peter Jackson did with Lord of the Rings, where understood, like, I need to make Lord of the Rings into a movie, and I need to adapt it in a way that works as a movie. This felt like she wanted to keep certain things, she wanted to change certain things, particularly about religion and things of that nature, and make it more kind of new agey, spiritually kind of thing, which I, I honestly am not really that into that stuff but regardless of how into it i am i didn't think necessarily worked i don't know the book very well i've read things about it but through other pieces about this movie and it sounds like an interesting idea to make a movie about but it seems like she kind of ava duvernay definitely brought her own take to it this is also written by jennifer lee who directed and wrote frozen co-directed frozen but i think a lot of this movie just feels sort of just like a golden compass like an interesting weird kind of diversion of like making these big fantasy kind of kids films you know this is more of disney's black hole than it is george lucas's star wars and a lot of that i think is because you know when i was leaving the film i was thinking about well what does make a great fantasy and how do i go through those things because if you look at lord of the Rings, like lord of the rings feels like it should fall apart in any moment in terms of the filmmaking and everything and how amazing it is that it got to work but i think the reason lord of the rings works i think is the same reason wizard of oz works is because in almost every scene in that movie you know exactly what those characters are and it's regardless of how you feel about, you know, I don't like stupid Hobbit movies or whatever the fuck. That's not the point, is that they are so easily definable and understandable that you instantly, instantly get it. And I don't think A Wrinkle in Time did that. You have this boy who's like the love interest and I get like the twist on it is like you have usually a pretty girl and she does that role. That's fine. On a theoretical level, I did appreciate that. But as a narrative level, it just felt like you kind of just went, I don't know, I needed three kids or something. Like the other kids felt like, you know, kind of like dead wood, basically with pretty eyes on it. But I like that the brother and sister I thought were very good. And I think the girl, it's more about like her emotional figure on who she is and being proud of herself and not being ashamed of herself and basically not wanting to be someone else, wanting to be herself. And I think that's beautiful in a certain way. And that's an interesting thing to do with big spectacle and special effects on things. But I was like, but didn't Inside Out sort of like do that and like do it a lot better and a lot more interesting and do weirder and different things with it. I was more open to different styles of animation and doing a completely original thing rather than taking a pre-existent story and making it this thing instead, but whatever. I thought her character worked very well. Her brother who has a shift at a certain point, that I didn't really, that felt like almost unearned. It felt like the narrative took a turn. The kid performers, the brother and sister in this, which are Storm Reed and uh, Derek McCabe, I believe, uh, were both amazing. And like they pull off a movie that necessarily, I don't think um, works all the time, but they go for it. And they should have great careers, particularly Storm Reed, I thought was really great. The performers, they sell it so hard, you almost sort of, in certain scenes, I'm like, oh, I'm believing this a lot more than crappier fantasy films that had, you know, shittier performances. I think in some ways the performances try to save this movie. They don't, but it gets closer. And even having someone like Chris Pine, who I think was really good in this, and almost like brought a kind of mournfulness to being lost and you know trying to accomplish things and being a father who wants to do things would also be a good father and he had all that within his performance i didn't really like the three misses thing i thought like reese witherspoon was a little a little annoying and nick Kaling didn't really say much because that was what she was doing and oprah is kind of just like being oprah which i guess is fine but it sort of felt a little boring to me what this film represents to you who probably hates this review someone who does appreciate this film you should let this film represent that to you but i think as a narrative as a story i just didn't really like this movie i think i do actually think ava duvernay is a good director but i think maybe this film just doesn't work I, I don't I don't want to go out and say it's interesting. It's kind of just an odd tangent of a blockbuster and an odd tangent that I don't think is weird and different enough. It's like how come all of these like weird kind of like lovely bones or this or, or even like Cloud Atlas or some of the Wachowski stuff. You always have these movies that feel like I'm like playing Mario Galaxy or something in terms of like the color palette and stuff. I mean it was often watching this film. I was just thinking about like it's pretty but like i really don't care it's like i wasn't 
into the film. The film never grabbed me and brought me into it. And regardless of what's going on in my own life or what I should be doing or whatever that is, when I saw like something like Black Panther or when I saw something like Annihilation, those films brought me into them and I'm still thinking about those experiences. Whereas A Wrinkle in Time, before I shot this review, I had to watch a trailer again to sort of like rejigger my memory about it. And that doesn't speak very highly of this film. This just feels like a, another big expensive movie and that's really all. It's certainly a different kind of big expensive movie, but it's not one that's really going to, I think, honestly, inspire you all that much. It's just kind of something that will make you go, oh, okay, I guess, you know. I think the book was probably more interesting than this, I assume. I just didn't think it worked at all. I, I, I really thought even the editing and how it was flowed, it just felt off the whole movie. I like the design of like the different worlds and like the sets and the colors and like kind of the real like kind of superficialness of this film. The interestingness of a CG film like this is like not really there for me and particularly how they design it with this. If they'd use more practical effects or something more interesting or tactile, I think I would have gotten more into it. I sort of get like adapting it and making it more like 2018, certainly having like a multiracial cast and things like that and having like a blended family and having adapting it and bringing it to our current age. And I certainly get that, but I just don't think ultimately they're interesting ideas in a film that really never finds a way to get that narrative to work and bring me in and make this a wrinkle in time like the big blockbuster kind of big movie that speaks to you and you want to watch anytime it's on tv and when hbo plays it if they were to play it it's a disney movie so they won't but just go with me here would play it at eight o'clock on a saturday you'd want to sit down with the whole family instead of that this is just another big expensive movie that is kind of a little interesting about it and it's beautiful but it's just kind of just the blandness of it's kind of like uneven flow and it's bad narrative just kind of like makes you just not really that arrested or grabbed by it. A film like this that is really about a little girl's soul, this film just really didn't find the truth that Inside Out did. It kind of like goes away from the truth by trying to do that with interesting and different kind of odd imagery. I think Ava DuVernay has a bit of a future actually in doing a film with more interesting kind of odd imagery and I'd very much like to see that. And this gave me a taste for that, but certainly like I was surprised at someone because Selma was so much performance and so much story and so much of all those things. Hell, she made a Martin Luther King movie where they didn't have any of the rights to the speeches, that's a real thing, and wrote new speeches and the whole film actually worked. It's like a miracle Selma worked as well as it does in a lot of those scenes and I can understand having the confidence to come and do a, a book that it was called unfilmable and hopefully get it to work but I don't think a wrinkle in time works at all leaving it I just felt as unconnected as I do with kind of any kind of blockbuster that doesn't really speak to me and it's a film that doesn't have big explosion set pieces and violence in it it is supposed to speak to you and speak to your emotions and i think in that way the real core of this movie the emotional core the thing that's supposed to speak to you and want to watch this with your family frankly doesn't work and the film without that kind of foundation kind of just falls apart and is never able to really get those pieces to really work and it all falls apart in an interesting mess that i guess we're all going to call beautiful so if you have seen A Wrinkle in Time and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.